Okay, boys and girls, my name is Mike Kelly, Animators Forum and RealIllusionForum.com. Um, I'm going to try something different. The, the Over Production Crate, they're doing a, they started some kind of a dragon project. And I was actually working on dragons. Um, I always work on dragons for my wife because she loves dragons. And I'm always trying to do, um, to get the perfect dragon, I don't know. And right now I'm trying to work on facial animation for the dragon. But I, what I thought I would do just for fun, and if you guys don't like it, stop watching this. Because really, I've never done this before, and I'm not even sure how successful I'm going to be at doing this. Uh, because a lot of times when I'm doing a project, I do what's interesting to me. I'm always a big believer in the what I call the fun down project, whenever I was actually working for a living. Uh, fun down, you know, you, you've heard of, I'm sure you've heard the expression top down. Uh, fun down means that you start at the parts of the project that are the most fun, and you do those first. And there's a lot of different theories about that. You, you, you might say, well, you start with the parts that are the least amount of fun, and but you know, if you start that way, you're never going to get your project done. So what I find is, if you do the stuff that's the most fun, then that gets you invested in a project, and then uh, you know you can you the stuff that's hard. Once you've done all the fun stuff, you think, well, I've spent a lot of time. I've got something to show. Okay, I'll do the hard stuff. So at least that's my theory. I, so I always work on what I call the fun down project. So I don't know that that's going to show up in this particular thing because I've done a lot of the fun stuff already, but we'll we'll see. So here we are. So basically, I'm, I'm going to have a dragon, and I need a place to put this dragon. So I'm going to put him in this cave. This is a Daz, and, and most of my stuff comes from Daz. The dragon comes from Daz, um, and I've already exported him and and brought him into uh, to iClone. So he's all rigged up. I'm not going to go through that process because most of you know how to do that. Although if you want, I'd be glad to show you. But basically I had to rig him. And I rigged him. This is, and I mentioned this before in some of my other tutorials, I rigged him as a non-standard, not as a non-human. Uh, when I want to have them move, I'm going to use the the uh, non-human because he's a four-legged creature. But because I want to do facial animation, you can't do facial animation unless he's rigged as, as a non-standard human. So I did that. So he's a non-standard human, which means his body moves a little weird, uh, but you can accommodate for that. But But the head and the face will move properly. So that's really what I want to do here. And then later on, I can always combine that with body animation with a with a duplicate of him linked up. And I've, I've already shown that in tutorials, but uh, I just thought I would mention it. Okay, so here I have this, I think this is called Caves of Cave Island, which is <laughs> a, very, uh, a very kind of original name. Yes, Caves of Cave Island. And it looks good. I thought maybe the dragon would be in a dragon cave. So I... So I took it in Daz, exported it, you know, brought it in through uh, Character Creator. We've talked about that before in other tutorials. I do that so I can get nearly all the textures. So I have most of that textures here. All that stuff is here. Uh, but what I need to do, there's still a lot of work once it comes over into iClone. You still have to uh, do things. I, I wish, and sometimes not a lot, but but there's, there's some things to do. So in this particular case, I'm working on the water. So this is the water that's actually in that Daz scene, but I don't want to use Daz water. I want to use iClone water. So what I've done is I've turned off all of the things except for the water. So there's these two pieces of water here, and you can see them there. So now what I want to do is I'm going to go to content and add some Daz water here. And I thought I would just use some deep flow so it's there. So now I have Daz water in the scene, but I need to modify that because I need to lower it so it's exactly or close to the height of that other water. I don't want it to be any higher than that. So, so so I can lower it down until I can start to see that other water. And as soon as I see that other water, then I, then I know it's too low. So, so I want to come up to somewhere that covers most of that other water. Uh, water tables are pretty consistent. I'm not quite sure why that other water that's way over there is higher, than, but there we go. Okay, so now it's at the right height. So it's, it's set right. And you guys know that the Daz water will animate, so it flows through there in the, uh, in the thing. So now we've got that set. So now that I have it set, I don't need these, uh, these pieces of water anymore. So I'm going to get rid of this one. I'm going to delete it out. And I'm going to get rid of this one. And So now I have the water in the cave. So now I start to unhide things to take a look and see what... Uh, well, okay, the second thing is... All right, <laughs> I'm getting hit myself. Fun. Remember fun down? When we did the fun stuff? Well, lighting is, is critical for these kinds of projects. And this particular thing in Daz comes with a lot of these um, made-up lights, these torch lights and things. If you can see some of these textures here, here's some of the textures. 
So they've got flames already. Well, obviously, we don't want to use this stuff in iClone. We want to make our own flames if we're going to use torches, and we, we might. So, um, so that's another thing we want to do is find out where those are. So there's these light sources. Well, actually, let's look at torch first. So there's torch there. Okay. And you know that when you're an iClone, if you've got something selected, then if you just press like the F key, you'll go immediately to where it is, except I don't. So oh, it would have been nice to turn it on. There we go. Okay. So there's, oh, I see. There's all these little teeny tiny torches. Yeah. Well, we don't want these. And, and I actually don't want to use torches here. I can understand if, uh, you know, if maybe this is a human cave, but this is going to be a, a dragon cave. So I'm not going to use the torches there. And we'll look at the other torches and see where those are. I don't see those either, but again, oh, I've got to turn them on. And there they are. Um, yeah, you know, if, if we were doing them, if I, if I was going to do these torches, just so you know, just follow through on this, I might just get rid of those flames up there. I would go to modify and go to the materials and then where the flame is, I would, I would just turn it off, just turn the opacity off so that flame's not there. And then I would go ahead and put a particle system there. And we, you know, we could do that if you want, if you want to see that. I, I'm just don't want to spend a lot of time on this. And again, this is the first time I've ever done anything at all like this, so I don't, I don't even know if this is something that interests you or not. Um, but if it is, I'll I'll put one particle thing here. Let's see what I've got here in the library. I think I have a torch here somewhere. Uh, I really hate the way that particle effects are stored here. They're not uh, they're not stored in any kind of uh, torch fire logical uh, sort of way of doing this. I don't know why it's jumping over here like this. Okay, there we go there. And bring it over here. Oops. Damn it. All right, come on. Part of the thing is uh, the... Um, I'm not quite sure of the scale of this set either. So that's causing me some issues here. Actually, what I think I'll do, just to make it... Again, I'm not even necessarily going to uh, to do this, but if I were going to do this, I would, I would... I'm going to show you the steps that I normally would do to do this, and then uh, that way you can do it yourself. For me, I doubt very much if I'm going to actually have torches in here. So you can see that it's kind of a line. Oh, I know what the problem... Oh, this is a good one. I'll show you this. I, it's, I'm having so much trouble with this torch set because the the uh, the mass of the torch set is not set properly. So not mass, the the center of it. So you know, whenever you have the objects that come in like we did from Daz and iClone, you always have to reset the the transformation. So uh, if we go over here to the pivot point, we'll do edit pivot and set it to the middle. Okay, now because it's set to the middle, that pivot set to the middle. If we go to this little piece here. And we go to align to. I, I know one of the reasons I don't like doing this is I tend to, to kind of get into myself and think about things, and and it's hard to also talk at the same time. I can teach something when I'm doing it, but when I'm actually just trying to figure something out, it's a lot harder. So there we go. So now, we're, if we were going to do this, and again, I'm not really sure I want to do this, but if we were doing this. We would get this all lined up to this one torch, the flame here, put down in there, and that's pretty close. And then you guys know that, you know, when we run this thing, you'd have the torch. And the flame, you see, was reflected on the water, so that's nice. So, uh, And then once you have the torch the way you want, and I'm not going to play around with this too much, but... Then you can just do a control and then move this somewhere else, and that'll duplicate it. So uh, we can then, uh, you know, put it, whoops, moved it too far. Put it and eyeball this thing down. And again, I'm not going to spend the time to do all this because this would be really boring, but at least you get the idea on how we would do this. We'll put a couple torches in here. <laughs> yeah, it is deceptive working in 3D to figure out where you are sometimes. Okay, there we go. And you guys are all going, you know, Mike doesn't know as much as I thought he did. He teaches, and then, yeah, we, you know, that's the whole thing about teaching and, you know, teach what you know. And uh, 
Okay. Close enough. We're, we're really close now. Ah. And up. I think I'll just leave two torches in here, and then, then you can imagine that if I did the rest, you would you would get the whole thing. So so there's our torches. So, you know, then we would we would go, whoa, we got torches there. And I kind of like the effect on the water. That's kind of nice. Okay. So anyway, so that's what we would do with all the other torches if we were going to light all the other torches up or... Uh, actually, the, I kind of like the idea of lighting this one torch up because it's way up in the air. Maybe I'll, I'll maybe I'll just light that one up one more time. Again, I'm just pressing the transform keys to, uh, and then the shift key. If you hold down the shift when you actually transform it, then it creates uh, a duplicate. And I'm just whoa, okay, way over there, isn't it? All right, not so much fun anymore. I might. <laughs> if you guys are going okay, I'm going to stop watching now. I'll. Uh, we're, we're going to get to some fun stuff in a bit. I, uh, although this is kind of fun. I, I actually love particle systems. They, uh, they add so much to your, to your render without really taking up much of your time. Okay, well, that's close enough. Again, I'm not really aligning this good. But you, what, what's nice about this is, you know, you get a very, very nice effect from, uh, from not, without, without a whole lot of work. So, you know, that's, that's nice. Okay. All right. So anyway, so that's... So that's what we got so far. So now we got our light sources. And usually when I'm doing stuff like this, I like to hide the stuff that I'm working on and then bring the other stuff back. But for now, I'm going to bring a lot of this stuff back because I think most of the rest of the stuff is okay. It's only the light sources. Oh, yeah, that's the light. That's right, light sources. All right, so again, lights. So that's obviously, we've done the torches. Light sources are the other big um, issue I'm not really sure why we have all these light sources, but oh, I see. Okay, yeah, this is this is a Daz thing. Okay, so these are like light emitting surfaces. This is the outside of the cave. So you can see this is the outside, and then you know it's it's formed, and then all these light sources are here to create various lights. Well, we don't need any of those. Those those are all. That's a strictly a Daz thing, and so uh, we have all those selected, and we can get rid of that. That's just that's just a Daz thing. So now we're getting a lot better. So now we're going to come back. Oh, the other thing I like to do too, which I didn't do, again, um, I'm just kind of trying to rush through this and not make it too boring for you, is that I like to set a camera up somewhere inside and then I try to focus it on, a, on an object so that then I can swivel around on that object. I can already see that my water may be a little too, a little not detailed enough. We'll have to see have to see where how it flows that it looks a little too small though for what I have in mind maybe maybe let's see yeah it's okay I could slow it down but I could also detail it more uh, but I'll worry about that later so basically I have my have my cave but I don't have a real light source yet and let's see if I turn off yeah okay we always go here and I've, I've showed this in other videos so much easier to do when I'm when I'm actually to, uh, showing you how to do this stuff. But usually um, we turn off all the light sources so we can see where the light's coming from. So there's still some light that's coming from the water itself. I don't know why, but uh, the water might be self-illuminated. Oh, there's the torches too. I want to be able to see those torches. Where's the where's that one torch? All right, let's do this. Let's go to the scene. And we'll turn this off. Let's see where that one, where's the one torch that uh, has the light to it? Oops. Don't we have, oh, there we go. Okay, there we go. That's where we want our scene. Okay, all right. All right, so I, I want to be able to see the torches. So I'm going to set up my camera on this side. So hopefully it won't be blocked by the, by the cave itself. No, it's really okay. All right, good. Okay, so we're gonna set the camera up. We're gonna create a camera. That's the boring part. Okay, so now we have our camera. Let's turn on some more of the rocks in the cave. Let's see where we are inside here. Hopefully nothing's gonna block us. Eh, it blocked us a little bit from those torches, so we have to we have to find out where they are. They're inside here. Okay, there we go. Oh, and there's some waterfall there. I thought I got rid of all the water. They, because this is a Daz scene, and remember, Daz scenes are mostly designed for uh, for uh, stills. 
they have water they have waterfalls coming down in here oh, oh that's cool i like that yeah we can see the, the light of the torches coming maybe we could have the dragon like 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 just poke his head out from the side oh those aren't okay that's not waterfall that's that's just hanging vines all right that's good all right maybe this is good enough Maybe this is all the light we actually need. And I've talked about this before. You know, you can create different light sources. And we'll try just a directional, like the sun's outside. Oh, that's kind of cool. We'll have the sun outside, too, because that way it can shine down into here a little bit. And we'll change the... Yeah, okay, there we go. That'll be good. That's the cave opening of the sun. And we'll we'll change the color of that, too, so it so it works out better. What's, what's always nice is to have blue and orange because those are great colors to, um, to contrast with each other. They make a really good, um, what am I trying to say? As I'm trying to do, I'm trying to think about three things at the same time. They, they contrast very well. Like this is what I'm saying. So blue and, okay, so there we go. So that's, you know, at, right now that's all I want to do for this indoor scene because otherwise I'm going to get way too bogged down in all this. So we got a camera, we got our indoor scene. So all we need is our dragon, okay? So I'm going to save this because you always want to save out your projects as you go. Save that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I already have the dragon saved in another project. So I'm going to go ahead and bring him. I'm going to open up that other project before I bring him in here. And, well, open project. And the nice thing about this is if I get too boring, you can just skip ahead to the more interesting part. <laughs> Just kind of skip the video ahead to where, to where it might be interesting. I'm going to actually have to stop this and pause this momentarily at some point because I have to get my uh, my phone. Because those of you that are, have seen my other tutorials know I'm going to use uh, Live Face in order to record this uh, dragon doing whatever he's doing. So here's the dragon. And um, I'm going to go ahead and select him and i want to save him because i'm have to bring him into the other scene so we go to avatars he is an avatar remember i rigged him up as a non-human avatar so he's actually uh, an avatar just as much as any of these our characters are but he just can't really move very well <laughs> in this regard uh but he can talk he can move his head and talk i mean he could move his arms i actually could do motion capture uh using the um you know, the PN suit that I have. The problem is because he's four-legged, you can already see his arms are crossed here. I would have to, I might have to try that sometime. Maybe I'll try try actually animating a four-legged creature using the PN suit and see what happens. But uh, but in any case, it's a little more awkward that way. So, okay. So here's, here's the dragon and uh, I've already rigged his face up for facial animation. So for example, if we go into animation here and we go to uh create script i'll try that let's see do i have i might have an audio file i don't know if i have an audio or script file i'm just going to do it with live face i'll show you how that works so we saved him out got him saved i'm going to pause this momentarily because i want to go get my phone and hook it up to live face i'll be back in a sec all right we're back again <laughs> all i did really was i went to the other uh, file uh, saved my dragon out and then loaded him back in to this scene I uh, got rid of a few things so I could see where to position the dragon and put him where I want him Okay, so now I have a camera set up. This is the dragon I, I, I'm not exactly happy with where he is right for one thing. He's kind of in these ferns So I'm gonna have to move him a little bit But I just wanted to kind of see how this would look with the with the torch flames going and that looks pretty good. Oh, by the way, the torch flames have that automatic distortion for that, which is why you're seeing that that distortion, like that heat distortion. That's built into the particle effects, so that's uh, that's pretty cool. So he's there. That's pretty good. It's I, I, like I say, I want to position him a little bit differently. But for now, the first thing I'm going to do is hook him up to live face. So. Um, those of you that are familiar with what I'm doing, basically Life Face is a motion capture system for avatars and iClone. Uh, basically, I, iClone is superb at animation. That's really what it's what it's meant to do. So, so we go over here to we go here to motion, and we're going to uh, 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 facial motion capture. That's what we're going to do. And I I've got my uh, this is face wear right now. Actually, that's not what I want. Why did it? Oh, I, don't, I want to do motion live. What am I doing here? Oh, I see what happened. I didn't have the dragon selected. Dragon selected, and now we can get face. 
<laughs> or actually, I still want Motion Live. I actually have a number of motion capture systems on this uh, computer. Uh, so I, I started off with uh, with Faceware, and I like Live Face a whole lot better. So Live Face here, I have to put in the uh, IP address for my particular uh, computer. Uh, oh, actually, the first thing I have to do, I forgot. Boy, it's been a while since I've used this. Can I... Can I um, uh, excuse myself and say that part of this is that my uh, <laughs> I'm going to have surgery in about a week, and so I'm not uh, I'm not completely 100% yet or at all. So what I'm going to do now, <laughs> you can't see this because I don't have a camera, but basically what I'm doing is setting up the Motion Live capture on my iPhone. So I have to plug it into the iPhone, plug in. I'm plugging in the Ethernet, and I actually also have to turn off. Uh, to, 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 to turn off the Wi-Fi. Uh, so I'm going to go to airplane mode. I've got Ethernet going. That's fine. I'm set up for Ethernet, and I'm going to go back to Live Face, which is there. Okay, so now what I'm going to do... Whoops. Ah, come on. This requires more hands than I have. I need a lot of hands. <laughs> Jeez. Ah, stop that. I'll be here in a second. <laughs> I'm trying to do a million things at the same time here. There we go. All right, all right. Get this. I have a little uh, stand for my iPhone. Uh, this this uses iPhone for those of you interested. That's the motion capture part of the process. So I have a little a little stand that holds my iPhone up. Uh, I don't actually like the stand much. I need to find a better stand for it. Okay, so here we go. So I got the the stand put up, and I have that. I need to put in the IP address for the Motion Live plug-in, so it's 192.168.146, whoops, 46, and that should be right, and we should be able to connect, come on, and I am connected, cool, all right, excellent. So now we've got the character selected, if we choose the face, you can, you can actually choose, um, uh, you know, the body or the hand with other, and I have all those other devices too, but we're just going to do the face. So right now, if I, if I, uh, first I have to set a zero pose, excuse me, just a minute. Okay. Zero pose. Now we're just going to preview this so you can see. So now if I talk, then the dragon should move and I, I should be able to move my head a little bit. I can move it up and down a little bit, close my eyes, blink my eyes. So that's that's not bad. Now I can adjust some of the of the motions and the uh, the way he talks. If I if I'm not talking distinctly enough, I can go in and adjust those. Um, uh, mm, oh, that's okay. I don't. I'm not crazy about the fact that the head's not moving very much though. Um, but anyway, um, okay, it's all right. All right, so that's close enough. So I'm all I'm all mapped to that. So basically, what it amounts to then is you just record your animation. So I'm going to go ahead and record something. Again, this is not going to be brilliant here, but I'll uh, I'll record something. I have to set the microphone, record the audio for that microphone. So I'm going to use the same microphone that I'm recording this. Part of the reason, by the way, you might notice some of these things lagging or not being as clear as detailed. That's because obviously I'm running the, I'm running all kinds of software on this machine right now. So, <coughs> excuse me, even though this is a, uh, a fairly high-end machine, it's pretty old, though, three years old now, um, it can do everything all at once, but iClone will catch everything up to it. So, again, I'm going to set my zero pose one more time. Okay, and now, and, and yes, okay, and I'm not going to smooth the head. I'll just leave it the way it is. Close enough. He can be... Uh, I'm a dragon. Why did you come into my lair? Saying I'm a dragon is a bit redundant, isn't it? You already know I'm a dragon. Well, that's silly, isn't it? <laughs> I don't even know what to say about all this. <sighs> okay, all right. Go, go, leave before I... <sighs> that last part was supposed to be fire. <laughs> okay, I know, that was terrible. Uh, I didn't have a script. Okay, so uh, <laughs> I'm all disconnected there. I just wanted to record something real quick so you can see how this is, because you guys are already probably way too bored by this. All right, so we're done. Uh, so we have the animation. We, we've done that part of it. I'm going to change and adjust this 
a little bit now because I want to go and have the dragon go a little bit back over here and here and maybe turn into the camera a little bit or there. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, there we go. Okay, that's pretty cool. Because I'm going to turn the, I'm going to actually move the camera while we're, we're mo in motion here. So uh, I also want to go to the scene, go to the camera. Where's the camera? Just this. I'm going to turn on the um, depth of field because I want to actually see some, uh, some depth of field in this. Not a lot. I still want to see some of the, of the background. I don't want to blur it out too much. So I'm going to, I'm going to change the, uh, the settings here a little bit. Let's, I want to see the DOF. Okay. So everything in red is, is, um, what am I trying to say? Everything in red is in focus. So we can set the region back a little bit more so we can see some of that in focus. I don't want to make this completely out of focus in the back and adjust our perfect focus range. So it's a little bit up. That sounds good. Okay, here we go. All set. All right. So basically what I'm going to do is as I play this, I'm going to uh, actually, you know what? I'm just going to scrub through this. I'll scrub to here and then I'm going to move the camera a little bit. Not much. Uh, oh, and also when you're moving the camera in iClone, those of you that have iClone, better to have your object selected as you move your camera because it'll rotate around that selected object. So that's uh, that's part of the process there. And we want to go through there. There. And maybe come in pretty detailed here. And that's where he's going to blast out the flame there. So right, right at that point, I want to have a big flame blast. So we're going to go to the content. I haven't, I haven't really planned this out at all. <laughs> you can obviously tell. That's the good news is you can obviously tell I'm not prepared for any of this because if I was, I would have, I would have done a lot better job of figuring out what the hell I was going to do here. Uh, <laughs> and I really don't have an idea. But at least it shows you, again, this is just a silly thing, just to, just to kind of have fun with it. Um, I'm in the camera. You don't want to, remember, you don't want to move while you're in the camera because then you'll, uh, you'll screw up your uh, positioning of that. So, uh, or the camera itself. So, move there. Where is that little guy? Oops. Ooh, we went over there? Wow. Make sure I'm just got that selected. Yeah, I had the flamethrower selected. Okay, so dragons have flamethrowers. That's uh, it's actually I don't see it exactly. Whoops! How did I get back that far? There it is. Okay. Jesus, it's so hard to line up stuff sometimes. Jeez, I'm having a terrible time, folks. Hang in there. I <laughs> just not able to get this lined up properly for some reason. You know what? I'm going to line it up with this. All right. Now. I know that's right over there. There we go. All right. So, yes. So he's the expert and he's struggling with this. Then I want to tilt it down a little bit so it's aiming out in that direction. And then I also want to go and attach that to the dragon because otherwise when the dragon moves, the flamethrower won't move. Okay. And then the last thing I want to do in the, in the sequence is I don't want to start the flamethrower until we're here. So about 1,200. So we're going to go here. So we're going to turn it off now. 
So by turning it off, it's off now at this point in time. Well, actually, I'm going to turn it off here. Turn it off. It's off. It's off. It's off. It's off. We get around to about uh, about there, I think, somewhere in that neighborhood. We we'll turn it on, and then hopefully, whoops. Oh, it went. It went in the wrong direction. Yeah, it's going in that direction. All right, so I have to. Uh, yeah, I have to turn it around a little bit. All right, well, we'll turn it around. Try that. That's still oh, just it just reoriented itself. Close. Uh, I'm going to bring out the. Uh, I've got some animation on that on that device which I don't want to have. So let me go here and see. Actually, I only think I need to see transform. Let's just go here. There it is. Okay. Okay. I want to get rid of all this animation here. Okay. That's the on off. So it's coming on there. I want to have it um, rotated around to the right place. So, flamethrower. Oops. Oh, shoot. You know what I did? I got rid of the transform that's there. I know what the problem is. I got to keep that transform, but I got to get rid of the other transforms. There we go. Okay. Now, there, that transform there, I'm going to go to, I know you're saying, what the heck is he doing? I'm, I'm trying to make sure I get this rotated properly so that the fire comes out of his mouth and rotates around to the right direction. Let's see if that's right. Oh, now it's going downwards. <laughs> ah, all right i'm not really good at this stuff okay that's left Let's see if we can what i'm going to do for right now is i'm going to turn the dragon off so I can see where the heck this flame is coming out of. Okay, so the flame goes over there to be a dragon, and then the, oh, the flame's blasting in that direction. Wow, that's really weird. Okay. All right. Okay, so I'm going to do something this way, this way, this way. I don't actually know how this flame blasts. Okay, there. That way. <laughs> Did you ever see me? All right. There we go. Now it's going in the right direction. So I want it to stay there. So what I want to do is I want to clear the object of animation. So now, so that should be right, right? Yeah. I often talk to myself, by the way. Yeah, that's close enough, I think. Maybe, maybe not. Not sure. Still looks like it's coming off at an odd angle, though. Okay, there we go. I think that's it. All right, I'm gonna say that's it. <laughs> if that isn't it, if that isn't it, I'm not gonna waste any more of your time. Well, it looks close enough. I'm I'm really bad with these parts. Oh, and then we want to turn it off. So after the flame goes. After he stops about there. Okay. So, okay, the particle's off there, so we gotta turn it off there. We, we cleared out the places where we turned it on and off, so uh, that was the problem with that. So, we 
make sure we're on flamethrower again, modify, and we'll turn it off, and we'll make sure it's off there. And then when we come down to around here, we'll turn it on. And then turn it off again out there. Okay, theoretically. <laughs> Uh, was that interesting to you at all? Probably not. All right, I'm sorry. I, I, you know, I, I really need to plan this out more. I actually had no plan whatsoever. No plan at all. Okay, so now the theory is that if you select all of these items here, and let's see them all, and then we go to the camera, and theoretically, we're more or less done. So if we, if we play this, I don't want to have that selected so you can see that... Uh, Let's select uh, something that you can't see. I'll select the light. There you go. Oops, I won't select that. Uh, 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 uh. How about if I select the sky? There we go. You'll never see that. Okay. <laughs> All right. So basically, it'll, it'll look something like this. I'm a dragon. Why did you come oh, into you my... you won't see the camera when it's animating, too. See, that's the other thing. Uh... It, it's going well. All right, well, we'll just, I'll, I'll render a frame. Saying I'm a dragon is a bit redundant, isn't it? You already know I'm a dragon. Well, that's silly, isn't it? <laughs> I don't even know what to say about all this. Okay, all right, go, go, leave before I. <sighs> okay. Obviously, you can see I need to move the particle effects over, and we need to render all this, and it'll look great. And I will. I'll render it, and I'll actually put it down below so you guys can see <laughs> with this. But hopefully this gives you a little idea about uh, my workflow, and probably now you never want to listen to anything I ever say again. <laughs> so we'll see you on the forums.